Hello everyone, Matt from Model Minutes here and welcome back to the workbench for another unboxing. Today I'm looking at this, the BAC Lightning F Mark VI in 1 to 100 scale from Tamiya. So join me as I take a look inside the box and see what this kit is like. So starting off on the front cover, we've got an image of the Lightning in flight with one of his wingmen. A fairly simple and attractive image, which I'm sure will draw the eye on the shelf. Up the top here, we've got some information about the model saying it's ready to assemble. Modeling skills would be helpful if you're under 10 years of age. No cement or paint is included, and you only get parts for one kit despite the fact that obviously there's two aircraft on the box. So they're just covering their back off there and the model may vary from the image on the box. So don't be, you know, upset, I suppose they're saying, if your kit doesn't match what's on the artwork. So coming onto the back of the box, there's absolutely nothing to see. And the, the thin edge here has some information about the actual aircraft. So apparently the actual aircraft had a length of 16.84 meters, a wingspan of 10.62 meters, and, a, and it was uh, 5.97 meters high. And it had a couple of Rolls-Royce Eben Mark 302 turbojet engines and could go to Mach 2.3, which is absolutely, you know, insane. That's an insane speed. Um, flipping over to the other edge here, we've got some more information in uh, two different languages about the actual aircraft and it has a paint scheme depiction here, which tells us that we should be using Tamiya colors and it gives a suggestion for the bare metal silver of this product. Over on the right, we've got some contact addresses as well. On to the short edges, and it's pretty much got the same information as on the front, but it has an item code here, which is 61608 star 500. And apparently it's in series eight and the other edge has the same. So let's get the box open and see what we've got in there. So opening that up, let's get this stuff out and just see what's on the inside of the box here. So we've got some printed information in different languages and it just tells us to read the instructions and be careful using your tools. So there, so little bit hints and tips on the inside there just to make sure you're not taking unnecessary risks. So let's look at the instructions first. And we've got a long foldy out piece of paper, all printed in black and white. Not a fan of that. I'd much prefer it to be in color. I would imagine that this was in color on their computers and then they just printed it in black and white to save ink. But anyways, we've got the image as depicted in the artwork on the box. And then we've got some information about the actual lightning here at the top. And then we've got some warnings down here, which then leads us on to the painting and decal schemes. So as you can see, the decal and painting instructions are black and white as well. But because this is a rather simple aircraft being painted pretty much all in silver, they've just labeled the different paints there. And all the paints are Tamiya specific. So at the top here, the first aircraft we've got is a five squadron Royal Air Force example. And then the next one down is a Royal Saudi Air Force one. So let's flip over onto the back and look at the actual step-by-step -step instructions. And you can see that there's quite a lot going on in each step. There's only three steps. And I feel like they could have broken this down to be a little bit clearer. But I think if you just take your time and read what you're doing, you shouldn't have any dramas. So in the first one here, we're basically putting in the the, ch the chair into the cockpit and it tells you the paint color callouts for that. And we join our wings, our fuselage halves, put our engine exhausts on, various other details, and then flip onto number two. And it says here, don't touch the landing gear until the cement has hardened. It does quite handily tell you to cut away the excess bits of plastic, which is nice because other kits don't always tell you to do that. And I have seen some people where they've built it and gone, well, I didn't know that bit wasn't supposed to be there. So that's not too bad. Well done, Tamiya and you can have your landing gear raised or lowered, which is always nice. However, I don't think that there is a pilot included, so having it raised makes it a little bit difficult unless you can get a one to 100 scale pilot put in it. 
because otherwise, you know, you've got a ghost playing with no one at the controls. And then moving on to the final step, and we add our overwing drop tanks and the cockpit canopy and our missiles and refueling probe. And then there's some aftermarket service cards and things down the bottom, which I can't use because I don't live in Japan, I don't think. So yeah, instructions, not too bad. Would have preferred them in color, but they've got some helpful information there for beginners. Let's look at the transfers. So they come sealed in this little plastic bag. Let's get it out. It's not completely sealed. Air can get in there, but um, it's slightly sealed. So let's get these out and they look okay. However, I know obviously cameras and things, they change colors um, of what you're looking at, depending on the ISO settings and stuff. But I think on the camera here, you can see that the white on the RF roundels has yellowed ever so slightly. It's not a pure white, it's more of a cream. And if you look at the packaging here, you can see we've got this yellow staining. So I think these have oxidized ever so slightly and um, they're not as white as they possibly once were. Had this bag been completely sealed and there was no air gap in there, I think it would have helped because the it wouldn't the oxygen would have been able to get in there. It would have been a sealed environment. But um, yeah, I think a quick go in my UV box should help to clear that up and bleach them back to being white again. But anyways, um, we've got our RAF ones on this side and our Saudi ones on the left. Printing is really good. They look a little bit thick compared to other manufacturers, but I don't think I'll have any issues. I haven't really done much in the way of Tamiya kits before, so it'll be interesting to see how they go on. Um, but yeah, they generally look okay. You can see down here, we've got a copyright date of 2004. So I'm wondering if these are 2004 vintage, given the fact that they've yellowed this much. I hope not. I hope they're a more, more, more recent release, but um, it is possible that these were made in 2004, which would explain the yellowing. But yeah, not too bad. And the issues can be fixed, I hope. Moving on now to the actual parts. So they come in this plastic bag, which is just stapled together. And I have made an absolute pig here of opening that. Yeah, I've ruined that. But let's get these parts out and see what we have. So we've got a clear part in its own little bag here. So let's get that out as well. Just the one. So we'll quickly look at this one whilst we've got it here. On the whole, that looks to be all right. The molded details. Oh no, I hate that. I hate it when they do that. The molded details are molded on the inside and not the outside. I cannot feel them on the outside at all. Um, yeah, not a fan of it when they mold them on the inside because it makes it so much more difficult to mask. That's very annoying. I might have to see if there's an aftermarket mask sheet for these online somewhere because I'm going to struggle to cut out the right shapes, especially as there's no panel lines to follow on the outside. As soon as I'm going to paint this on the outside, it would make sense for the frames to be on the outside. But hey, I guess that was a design choice at the time. Other than that, though, the plastic looks to be crystal clear and the flash is minimal. There's hardly any flash on here. Can't see anything really in the way of major blemishes or um, faults. So yeah, not too bad. Just I wish the molded detail was on the outside of the frames. And then looking at the plastic parts, we've got one and a half, kind of, two. I mean, it's three, it's three. We've got three plastic sprues effectively. So let's take a look at this one here, which holds our uh, fuselage and wings. So the wings come as one part. A lot of models, they tend to have it upper and lower, but this comes molded as just one wing on each bit. And we've got our left-hand side fuselage here. And you can see that we've got some pretty interesting details. It is primarily recessed and raised. There's a lot of recessed panel lines and they look to be really well reproduced. There's even like the hint of some rivets over here on this side, which is nice to see. 
the wings as well, generally not too bad, but I've noticed here as well that we've got our slots for the overwing tanks. And if you wanted to display this without the overwing tanks installed, you're going to have to fill that and then rescribe your panel lines. Um, because I, I'm pretty sure they could have them removed. Um, flipping over to the other side then, and we've got our landing gear slots here and here. And there is no detail on the inside of the cockpit, but at this small scale, it's probably not going to be noticeable anyway. The plastic feels relatively smooth. A primer would definitely help with the paint sticking to it, but it doesn't feel particularly greasy, so you may not need to wash this one when you come to build it. Let's look at this other sprue then. So this has our air-to-air -air missiles. I believe that they're red tops and then our overwing tanks. And the plastic color is slightly different. It's ever so slightly darker on this than it is on this. So I guess this one came from a different run or maybe a different uh, tooling. Perhaps there are different variants of the lightning out there, but that's something I'd have to do more research into. Yep, so these again, flash is minimal and the details are reasonable. However, on this one, it's raised panel lines or raised raised marking lines there, but they are very shallow. There's not really anything to see there. So going on to the last one then, and we've got our other fuselage half, which doesn't have the tail part because that was included on the other one. And it's to the same standard. Molding quality is pretty good. Tiny little bit of flash but generally really nice to see. Again, no detail on the inside of the cockpit. And then we're moving on down and we've got our other small details such as the landing gear covers. We've got our tail surfaces here. The tail surfaces, interestingly, have raised panel lines rather than recessed as is on the uh, fuselage there. So if you're getting a bit closer, you can see that they are raised rather than recessed. And that's the same with quite a lot of the other things here, like the um, landing gear covers. They've got raised details rather than recessed. But yeah, not too bad. And then the wheels. The only thing that annoys me about the wheels, I mean, they're really nicely molded, but there are some ejector pin marks on there, which will need a bit of a tidy up if you can be bothered with that sort of thing. Engine exhaust here and uh, air intake. They look to be quite nicely molded. Bit of a mold scene down the chair there, which would need cleaning up, but generally pretty good. Before I finish this review, I think it's just worth uh, reminding ourselves that when I get a kit like this, I tend to review it as the age that it is when I get it. So I bought this one, which I believe to be new. It wasn't marketed as second hand or old. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna judge it against modern day standards. And yeah, it does, meet more or less modern day standards. The only thing that uh, I have noticed is that on quite a few of these parts, you can see some little scratches. They're quite hard to pick up in the camera. And um, I think the place where I noticed them the most was on the wings. So like over here, for example, you can see there's a few scratches going down that way. And then on this one as well, there's some more scratches and things. So it's almost like the mold hasn't been massively looked after or perhaps, you know, tidied up prior to this production run. So there's some scratches down here as well, which is a little bit of a shame, but generally the mold quality looks pretty good. So I'm comparing this against kits which would be produced now, but um, we'll talk about the age of this kit in a minute, but we'll just wrap up what we had. So we had one, two, three, dark gray plastic sprues, which are to a really nice quality, recessed and raised details. And there is like the absolute minimum of flash. We've got one clear part, which is nice and clear, but it has its molded detail on the inside, which I find very annoying for when you come to paint it. A set of decals for both schemes, but unfortunately they seem to have yellowed a little bit, possibly due to the age maybe. But, um, you know, like I said, I like to think that this is a new kit because I've not been told otherwise. It's not second hand. Um, so it wouldn't be that great if it was a new kit. But if it was 2004 vintage, it could be understandable. A set of instructions which are relatively easy to follow but would benefit from being printed in colour. All of which comes contained within a suitably sized and illustrated box. So yeah, 
let's talk a little bit about this kit. And what I'm about to tell you, if you don't already know it, will possibly blow your mind because it's blown mine when I did my research for this kit. And whilst this kit supposedly dates from 2004, so maybe I should be a little bit more lenient with it because apparently, according to Scalemates, that was the last time this was released. And it is possible that this has pretty much been sitting on a shelf for the past 20 years. But it is equally possible that since 2004, this has been on a slow production run being manufactured consistently or, you know, over different periods of time because nothing has massively changed since it was made in 2004. However, according to Scalemates, this kit actually dates from 1968, which is insane. That's like the level of detail and the quality of this kit on the tooling front, date, dating from 1968 is absolutely like mental because this has got, I mean, we've just looked at it. It has all of those nice recessed details. It's got crisp molding. Granted, it's still got some raised panel lines and it's got that weird internal um, cockpit canopy molding. But when you consider that something like this was made in 1967, and this is, you know, fairly typical of the sort of standard of that era. This just blows it out of the water, doesn't it? Like this kit, if you released it today to that standard, you'd find it perfectly acceptable. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. So yeah, that has blown my mind. Um, so with that in sort of retrospect, it being a 1968 tooling, I can't really fault it. But some of those small issues that I have still remain, such as the internal cockpit canopy details, the slightly yellowed um, decals, and the other few other little bits and pieces. But for the price, I'm willing to overlook them. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, how much does this kit cost? And I kid you not, I bought this new from an actual model shop online for three pounds fifty. Again, blow my mind. Like that is so cheap. I went to a model show a little while ago and the sellers in the, in the model show had this kit and they had some of the older uh, vintage version from possibly 1968 or maybe around that time, maybe the eighties, um, which was going for four or five times that price. They even had these going for like two, three, four times the price as well. So, you know, be, be careful when you're looking for this, because although it looks to be a really nice kit, you can get it quite cheaply. So £3.50 for this, for this quality, absolute bargain. So if you can find one for that price, definitely snap it up. But anyways, why did I buy this one? Well, a long term friend of the channel, Moz6510, he actually has a English Electric Lightning Challenge. So if you build an English Electric Lightning and you let him know and you show him and, and all that good stuff, I'd, I'd suggest you go over to his channel and take a look to find out how you can get involved. He'll send you one of these patches. Granted, I haven't actually built mine yet, but when I finish it, I'll be able to display it next to my patch. That was the main reason why I got this one. And what I'm thinking of doing with this one is a simple out of the box build, possibly using rattle cans to finish it off with because it has a very simple paint scheme. Anyways, I think it's time to wrap this one up. I think it's probably worth mentioning that I've sat here for like a couple of minutes now trying to think of how to sum this one up because it has blown my mind that much. It's a kit potentially from, you know, a really long time ago, which has amazing detail and you can get it for so cheap. Um, yeah, if you find one, just buy it. Don't even question it. Um, so yeah, let me know down in the comments. Was my assessment fair? Do you agree with my comments? And have you built one of these yourself? Do you think that it is as good as I have perceived it to be in this review? Quick shout out to my channel members and patrons for the extra support they give the channel. A massive thanks to these guys on screen. If you'd like to find out more about how you can get involved, take a look at the link in the description. I'd like to welcome my newest members who are Animaniac and Lee who join us on Patreon. Welcome to the club. If you're new here and you'd like to see more content like this, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and dropping a like will help other modelers find this video as well. Finally, the last thing to say is a massive thank you to you for watching this one and I'll see you on the workbench again next time. <laughs>